Diaz. Good morning and welcome to the Big Brave Broadcast. My name is Sadell Chase Rosario, but you can call me your caring correspondent Chase. And I'm here to tell you that what we have on the inside can make the world a better place. I see you and I know that you have what it takes to think big and be brave. Each episode will meet strong people, learn powerful words, and practice new skills so that you can choose your own path and tell your own story. Ooh, I'm so excited. Let's get our brains ready to read, rise, and revolutionize. <clears throat> and now for today's top story. <laughs> Thanks, Correspondent Chase. And now to today's top story. Now, we already met four amazing women who were really good at math, and that helped us get into space. So today, we're going to meet a woman by the name of Ellen Ochoa. She was the first Hispanic woman in space. But I don't want to tell you guys too much about it. Let's go to the professor. And go! Hey! Welcome back. For those of you that are new here, I am the professor. And later on, remind me to explain to you why, very easily, the Count is by far the best character on Sesame Street. But for now, I want to start with space. What is space like? What's in space beyond the Earth? What's there? You ever think about how we found out about these other planets or stars or any of that? Space is one of those things that's scary generally to the professor. And just, it's also one of those things that I understand like, hey, other people are going to teach me about that. That's just fine. Too many things we don't know. But we have had plenty of people and things that have gone up into space, including the first Hispanic woman in 1993. Who is it? You know what comes next. To the Thunderdome! Here we are in the Thunderdome, but as always, remember, shh, it's secret. Now, second verse, same as the first, so y'all know what comes next. Say it with me now. I can learn big, brave things. Let's go. One of four siblings, Ellen Ochoa was born in California with grandparents who came from Mexico. Being really into math, science, and music as a kid, she took her talents to San Diego State University and then Stanford. Both of those are the names of colleges in California. And so she used that to eventually become a doctor in electrical engineering. You don't actually need to have a doctorate in something that has to do with the body. Keep that in mind, folks. So in 1990, she was picked by NASA to become an astronaut. Now, what's NASA? NASA, just four letters that stand for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Put more simply, it's really just the group or the organization that lets us know, hey, here's what's going on in space. Ochoa got into NASA in large part thanks to her work in research, but became the first Hispanic woman to go into space on the space shuttle named Discovery for this nine day mission. Overall, she'd end up spending nearly a thousand hours in space. That's more than 40 days straight. Now, once she retired and stopped being an astronaut, uh, she got another first too. This time, she served as the first Hispanic director, big fancy word for the head, of the Johnson Space Center. Ochoa also continues to understand her place as a role model for others. She's talked a lot about how big of an influence Sally Ride was on her. Now, Sally Ride was the first American woman, period, in space back in 1983, about seven years before Ellen decided to go up. So not only that, but Ride also went to Stanford, like Ochoa, and also studied physics, a type of science, again, also like Ochoa. So Ochoa saw that when she was 25 and knew that she could also do that because of her. So Ochoa always wants to encourage others to go after those dreams that may seem impossible. One of the things I really like most about Ochoa's story is the point that impossible 
is only impossible until you see it. Ochoa may not have had being an astronaut on her mind until she saw someone else do it, in this case, Sally Ride. And sure, it could be hard, but nothing in your life worth doing is going to be easy. And think about what it could mean to others. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to keep trying to walk on my hands. Wow, we learned so much about Ellen Ochoa. But I wonder how she was feeling. Who can we go to to find out how she was feeling? That's right, Detective Ortiz. <clears throat> and now to Detective Ortiz. How Ellen Ochoa was feeling. Well, in order to find out how, detectives like me ask five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. Oh, what's the first question? Who did we learn about? Uh. Who is the narrative about? You found who? Pat yourself on the back. What's the next question? What did they do? Oh. What did they do? You found what? Pat yourself on the shoulders. What's the time for now? Exactly when and time did this take place? Oh. In time, did they create change? You found when. Pat yourself in the brain, but not too hard. Where do we go from here? Exactly. Where did this take place? Oh. Where did their story take place? You found where? Pat yourself on the tummy. Why is the last question so hard to remember? Exactly. Why did they say with me, revolutionize? revolutionize. Why did they revolutionize? You found why? Let's put it all together. Pat yourself on the back. Pat yourself on the shoulder. Pat yourself on the on your brain, pat yourself on the tummy. You did it. Nice! I see a letter! You know what letter this makes? Exactly an H. An H for how? For how Ellen Ochoa was feeling. Let's see. Okay. Great job, junior detectives. You guys found the feelings word. You found the word insignificant. Ooh, that's a big word. I don't know what that word means. Who can we go to to tell us what that word means? That's right, Grandmother Nature. And now to Grandmother Nature with the feeling words weather. Whether you're feeling happy or whether you're feeling sad, whether you feel surprised or whether you're feeling mad, whatever the weather, we'll face it together, however you're feeling today. Roar! Roar! Ah! Oh my goodness, this is a dinosaur! What am I gonna do? Maybe I could punch it! Oh no, it stepped on my hand! Oh my goodness, it stepped on my face! And he's got a friend! Hi guys! <laughs> Sorry. Hi, welcome to the Feeling Words Weather. I'm your grandmother nature and I am so happy to see you again. I apologize, I was just playing with my dino stuffies and one of my wrestler action figures. I might have borrowed them from my grandchildren, but you know, we like to share because sharing is caring. Anyway, I heard that you found the feelings word. Do you remember what it was? 
with that? <gasps> That's a big word. Insignificant. Say it with me. Insignificant. Very big word. Very adult word. But you know what? You guys are so smart. We're going to talk about it. What does it mean to feel insignificant? Well, I was just playing with these dino toys. And even though I got this big, strong wrestler guy, he kind of seems very, very small next to these big, giant dinosaurs. If I think back all the way to the Jurassic period, those dinosaurs were like taller than some buildings. As a person, I would feel kind of small, almost like I didn't matter. And that's what insignificant feels like. When you feel insignificant, it's like you feel very small. Like you're a very small piece. Sometimes it feels like you don't even matter at all. It's not a very nice feeling to feel insignificant. So, if you ever feel that way, try using that word. If you feel like you just don't matter at all, or you're very small, or people may not be paying attention to you, you can say, hey, I feel insignificant here. And they might be like, whoa, that's a big word for such a small person. But it might get their attention. So let's think about which category it goes in. Ding, right there in living color. Is it a sad word? Is it a mad word? Is it a scared word? Is it a joyful word? Is it a powerful word? Or is it a peaceful word? What do you think? What's that? Yeah, I agree. Look at this guy. I think it's a sad word. When you feel insignificant, you feel small. You feel kind of like you don't matter. But the good news is you do matter. You matter a lot. So if you're ever feeling insignificant, just say, I feel insignificant. And tell someone why. Maybe they can pay more attention. Maybe you can have a conversation about how you can fit into part of the process. That's how great change happens. Well, fortunately, I can keep playing. And maybe I can make believe that this guy became friends with these two dinosaurs. And then he felt better. Maybe he even felt inspired or astonished. I can use all my words when I'm playing. So much fun. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks, guys. I was feeling a little insignificant, but you... Thanks, Grandmother Nature. Just like Grandmother Nature said, if you're ever feeling insignificant, maybe you can ask how to be part of the process. That sounds like a social skill. But who can we go to to teach us about social skills? That's right, Coach Fran. <clears throat> and now to Coach Fran with Social Skills Sports. Let's get ready to learn skills, social skills. I said to stop, take a breath. I said to stop, take a breath. I said to think, what's my plan? I said to think, what's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think, what's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think, What's my plan? Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right, all right. Now I've got it, now I've got it. Here we go, here we go. Hiya, sports fans. This is Coach Fran, and I'm a fan of having a plan. Got lots of plans for the big game, but we're not talking about games. We're talking about life, and you need social skills for life. Well, sports fans, I have got the best thing to play with. Coach Fran had her dino stuffies. I got dino robots. I am so excited. I got me a group of triceratops. And I got me a dino. It's either a brontosaurus or a brachiosaurus. I have got to consult the manual. However, they are so much fun to play with. But it looks like these two Triceratops are playing in a group of their own. And poor little Brontosaurus over here wants to join. 
That reminds me of a social skill. Join in a group. Let's put it up there on the screen. Right there, there it is. Now, have any of you guys ever been playing by yourself, maybe, or in a group, and someone else wants to join you? Makes you feel real special that they want to play with you, but sometimes it can be tough, because sometimes this group is playing one thing, and this person wants to join, and they're just not sure. Well, we have a social skill for that. So, step one. You're going to want to use a calm tone of voice. Because if this Brachiosaurus came over and said, Hey, let me play with you! These Triceratops probably wouldn't be very keen. They'd probably run away. Can they skate? They'd skate away. All right. So, you want to use a nice calm tone of voice. Let's try that again, Mr. Brachiosaurus. Excuse me, can I play with you? Ooh, that sounded better. The second step is to say, excuse me, may I join you? Now, you say excuse me so they know that you're talking to them. So, let's try this again, Mr. Brachiosaurus. Excuse me, ooh, may I join you? Now, the third step is you're going to listen for the group to answer. Maybe there's a reason they're playing all by themselves. Maybe the game only has two players. So you want to make sure that you listen to their answer before you just jump in. Because let's say they were playing a game and they were making a tower and it had to bounce and he just jumped in. Oh! Messed up the tower? That's not going to be good. So he's going to wait and listen. Yes, you can join us. We would love to play with you. Oh, shucks. Thanks. Oh, I love it when dinos get along. So the fourth step is to say thank you if they say yes. And if they say no, no, sorry, we're playing a game of cards and there's only two people. You say, all right, and you move on. I know you guys learned that skill. Sometimes it's fun to just watch the game. Other times you can go off and find something else to do. But most times it's going to be okay to join a group because playing with friends is so much fun. I know I'll miss that right now. So what I want you to do this week is I want you to practice, even if it's just in your house, how to join a group. Saying, excuse me, may I join your group in a nice calm tone of voice, just like Mr. Brachiosaurus over here, and waiting for them to answer. See how it goes. I bet you will have so much more fun, and the group may want you to join them even more when they see you using your fancy dancy social skills. Well, I gotta go because, you know what, I'm having too much fun playing with these robot dinosaurs. I'll see you next time. Awesome plan, Coach Fran. I'm going to go try to practice how to join a group later on this week. Well, that's all the time I have with you guys today. But remember that you have the power to chase your dreams and change the world. And now to Jaquan Ortiz to tell us what we've learned today. Hello, my name is Jaquan Ortiz. And now it's time for, what did we learn today? Today we met Ellen Ochoa. And we learned a new word, insignificant. Say it with me. I feel insignificant. And we learned a new social skill, joining a group. That's all for now. But just remember to think big and be brave. Bye.